Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. You may notice that I am in a new environment. It's because I just moved and I am so excited to start making videos once again here on this channel. I've had a lot of people asking me to do some readings of previous essays that I wrote about Morgan Le Fay and the current representation of witches. So today we are going to be doing one of those essays. I'm going to be reading out to you what I wrote several years ago, but I'm still very passionate about it. And it's something I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes research on in the hopes of writing a nonfiction book in the future. Today, I'm going to do a reading of the first of two essays that I wrote, which is about the modern representation of witches and where that came from. Where was it derivative from? Obviously, when we are talking about reading out an academic essay, um, I'm not saying that anything Thing that I am saying is 100% fact. This is just what my thoughts were and my postulations were, and it is postulations that I totally believe in. Um, it, it makes sense to me that the modern day representation of women comes from the basically oppression of paganism and women as Christianity was entering into Europe but you will learn more about what my thoughts are as I go through this reading. The next one will be about Morgan Le Fay, but I wanted to do this one first because I actually talk a lot about what I talk about in this paper in that paper. So I wanted to get this one done first. If you don't want to watch a video version of this, it's also going to be on the Thick Witch podcast, which I'm going to be bringing back for readings and discussions like this, but also for other conversations because I really miss podcasting. So I'm really excited about doing this reading and let's just do it. And comment below what your thoughts are. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I think it's important to have discussions about this kind of stuff. And I could keep going, but I'm going to stop. This is titled Bewitched by Power, how the archetypal witch was developed during the Middle Ages and the implication it had for women. Throughout many European countries, the witch has often played a role of the deviant within the society, one who channels the occult to destroy and harm the devout citizens of their community. The representation of witches throughout much of Europe during the Middle Ages, specifically when looking at gender, seems to be frequently skewed to the female citizens of any given country. This video and discussion will look at why women were more likely to be accused of witchcraft and through an examination of witchcraft during the Middle Ages itself, why witches were frequently deemed to be demonic or evil. By looking at the sources of the demonic representation of women and why it was predominantly women being put in these roles, this conversation will unpack some of the issues I believe to be surrounding these kinds of representations and the lasting effect that these mindsets have left on witches and their relationship with the arcane. Witches often play the role in many stories of a sinister creature who seeks to harm the most pure citizens of the story. However, witchcraft was a very real fear for many citizens in medieval Europe, not just the antagonist of a fairy tale. This fear over the arcane and those who utilized the occult came from multiple sources. One of the most prominent sources of this fear was a developing stigma against paganism and any practices that did not conform with Christianity. Throughout Europe, there had been many circumstances where Christian reformers had arrived and immediately started to ban and slander the pagan rituals and rites that had occurred for centuries prior to the arrival of Christianity. Much of what was deemed to be witchcraft during this time period was directly related to paganism and thus was an enemy of the Christian state. Frederick Valletta states in his book Witchcraft, Magic, and Superstition in England, 1640 to 70, that, quote, it was widely believed that witches were the devil's servants on earth, end quote. The devil was a creature that was portrayed as cunning and incredibly persuasive, and Valletta notes how many believed that witches were the result of weak minds that had been persuaded by Satan into believing that Christian teachings were wrong. Many demonologists stress that, quote, the devil could deceive others into thinking he had power, end quote. This meant that not only were witches considered to be servants of the devil, but they were additionally perceived as easily deceived and swayed from their faith. It was widely regarded during this time that women were more likely to be persuaded into the occult than men. Women were susceptible to corruption and men were the champions of faith. In a world where this paradigm existed, the relation between witches and the demonic had already been made. The portrait as to why many of the witch accusations and persecutions 
suddenly becomes clearer. The idea of deceit in relation to weakness is interesting when in looking at those who were accused of witchcraft. A trend begins to appear where the predominant portion of these accusations were against women. Witchcraft and the magic that in many cases manifested in physical violence against another was frequently accused to be done by women. Many scholars postulate that it was regarded during the Middle Ages that, quote, the fragile female sex, feebler in both mind and body, was particularly prone to witchcraft, end quote. The belief that women were weaker in cohesion with the aforementioned idea that the devil was persuasive and deceiving implies that women were often swayed to the occult as a result of their weakness and lack of faith. This perceived weakness meant that any time that these women strayed from their role as Christian citizens of a community, they would be accused of witchcraft. These societal beliefs and structures are complicated, however, by the ideas that are brought forth by some scholars in regards to witchcraft and the power that it allowed women to have. In a world where women were not often afforded the same opportunities as men, both in terms of lifestyle as well as power, for some women, magic was, quote, an active assertion of power. Poisons could be used to kill an abusive husband. These women using physical violence or poison in an effort to assert their power over those who had wronged them, were a direct threat to the patriarchal system that much of medieval Europe had operated under. Many women, feeling as though they were trapped in situations with no escape, locked in relationships that were unhealthy or unable to adequately retaliate against members of their community who had wronged them, often turned to poisons and thereby witchcraft to help them to their goal. There was one woman who, quote, supplied poison to a number of dissatisfied wives. Even though these poisons were technically not arcane in any way, they were most likely created from herbs that had proven poisonous to humans in the past. And as a result, many of women, many women were accused of witchcraft after using them. One of the other things to consider here is that there was herbs used in pagan rituals and in witchcraft and in spell work. So an inextricable tie was created between herbology and witchcraft for a lot of these women. Whether the accusation, whoa, came from their use of poison, something that could be considered pagan, or their assertion of power or both is a point of contention. Additionally, while physical violence would seem an unlikely signifier of witchcraft, it, quote, could also be attributed to sorcery, laying the blame on women and their evil deeds. What the overarching theme here is that women, in an effort to assert what little power they could muster, often turned to physical violence or poison to fight back against the patriarchal society that they lived in. This assertion of power would, hypothetically, being a threat to the patriarchal world that was being erected throughout much of Europe. By calling the women witches and therefore directly relating them to the demonic, the women were being stripped of the power that they had gained and punished severely for their crimes against their community and their religion. Overall, the archetypal witch, one that has been portrayed in media for centuries now, seems to have been derived from a few specific problems that arose during the Middle Ages. In a world that was attempting to move past paganism and into a new age of Christianity, anything that was considered to be pagan was deemed demonic, and those who did those pagan practices still were called witches, and as a result, were directly related to the devil. Women who were considered the weaker sex during this time were also thought of as easily corruptible to the temptations of the demonic, where men were the champions of their Christianity. When women began to use physical violence and poisons to assert power in a world where they had none, they were accused to be witches. All of these things were a way for the communities to remove power from them. By accusing them of witchcraft and thus claiming that they had turned their back on Christianity, they could effectively be ostracized from the community and punished for their crimes against its devout citizens. This mix of the women being the gender that is more readily corrupted by the demonic and their attempts to assert power in a patriarchal world played a significant role in developing the stereotypical witch. Paganism was hardly demonic prior to the introduction of Christianity, and much of the magic was healing salves made from herbs, spell jars, divination, tarot, all of these things that we do currently as witches now. However, due to Christianity's inability to mingle with other religions, anything related to paganism was immediately deemed evil. 
As these ideals about witches spread throughout Europe, they became power-hungry demon worshippers who sought ways to maim and injure good Christian people. And that became how people saw paganism and witchcraft. But when you really look at the sources of the archetypes, it becomes clear that witches were probably just women who were looking to have a bit more power in a world where they had none. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the reading of this paper that I wrote uh, seven years ago now. Um, I really find this topic, I'm very passionate about this topic. I find it very fascinating and uh, I'm more excited to read the one about Morgan Le Fay. So that will be coming soon. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. You know, you could have a much longer, much more nuanced conversation about these kinds of things, but I figured doing a reading of something where I had already kind of put everything together in a cohesive way would make much more sense than me rambling into a microphone for a very, very long time. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to follow me on all of my other social media. Uh, I upload every single day on TikTok. I try to have conversations like this on TikTok, but it's definitely a shorter form, so it's a little different. Um, and I try to post every single day on Instagram. I'm really excited to bring these kinds of conversations back because they are truly what I am passionate about to my core. And the more I talk about them, the more passionate I get. Please let me know if you would like to hear me discuss anything else. Is there something you would like to hear me talk about? Please let me know. And uh, that is everything from me for today. I hope you all have wonderful morning, noon, nights, evenings, whatever time it is, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!